Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Pirates Rebuild on MLB The Show 24. Today, the Pittsburgh Pirates finally have their home opener. Will they prevail? Will the Orioles take them down? We'll soon find out. We start off today, Marco Gonzalez is on the mound facing off against Cedric Mullins. 0-1 pitch now coming to Mullins here in the top of the first. Let's see how Gonzalez does. This is one of those pitchers that we're not sure if they're going to hang out on the team long term. Gonzalez puts down Mullins in the first out of the game. Next up, we have Westberg. Westberg, excuse me. The nice deep drive to center field over Olivares' head for a double. Not a good start for Gonzalez on the mound. And the ball's thrown away. What is going on with the Oh, I hit the cutoff, man, and then just hold on to the ball there. Woof. All right, here we are. 0-2 count, and a line drive up the middle. It's 1-0 Baltimore. That escalated fast. Santander's up to bat here. 1-0 count. Let's see what Gonzalez has for me. Tries to curve ball. It's a little bit low there. Now we're on to a 2-2 count, and Santander pops out to Telez. Two down. Mountcastle is up to bat here, and he drives one deep to right field. Is Joe going to get back there to get to it? Seems like he will. Let's go to the bottom of the first. And it looks like we are facing John Means. He has one start so far this year. We're super early in the season. That makes sense with a 5.4 ERA. Let's see if Jared Trujillo can get going. Still batting under 100 for the season. 091. Ouch. First pitch here to Trujillo. He takes one for a ball. Jumping ahead in the count is 3-0. Let's see if he has the green light. He does not. And oh, that caught the corner. We'll give it to him. We'll respect it. 3-1 count now. Let's see what Means has to offer us. Ball four. Got an early base runner. I'll have to check his on-base percentage and see how much higher that is than his batting average because that's also important in baseball. Jumping ahead here, Connor Joe with a 1-2 count now after that ball was thrown by Means. Trujillo getting a good lead over there at first. The pitch is up. And ball two. 3-2 full count now to Connor Joe. And he struck him out. Cannot catch up to the fastball there. That's a little frustrating. Brian Reynolds is up now. He's starting the season hot. 467 is his batting average right now. Let's see if he can move the base runner for us. And we get a high strike there. That's interesting. 0-1. Let's see what Reynolds has here. Looks at another strike. Does Reynolds remember he can swing the bat? He's allowed to do that. They check on the runner at first there, just to make sure he knows that they're aware he's at first. No shot at picking him off. He's not taking a big enough lead there, but you never know. 0-2 pitch here, coming to Reynolds. And it's a ball, ball one. Well, Reynolds fights back, gets it to a full count, and hits a ground ball up the middle, but shortstop is able to pick it up and turn two. That ends the first. Top of the second here, we have Hayes up to bat. Gonzalez still on the mound. And it gives up a base hit. Joe cannot get to that. The speed in the outfield is going to be a problem, and I'm definitely going to be taking a look at that during scouting and the players that we trade for or draft. And Gonzalez is ahead of the batter here and strikes him out. Yeah, get stable here. Calm down. Get all set in. Get set into this game. 1-0 pitch and a base hit. And let's see if Joe can throw the runner out at home. Arms pretty good there, but a run scores. 2-0 Baltimore. Not looking good so far. We jump to the top of the third with Westberg up to bat. And Westberg gets all of it. Reynolds doesn't even run after it. It's 3-0 Baltimore. 421 feet, 105 exit velocity. And we got a 2-1 count with two outs here. Ground ball to Gonzalez, and he just misses it. So Bay has the day off today. He was getting a little tired, so Gonzalez is our backup second baseman, but that's not going to fly. That's just not good enough. Next batter, Gonzalez has a chance to redeem himself and throws him out at first. 
Moving to the bottom of the fourth here, Connor Joe is up to bat. Still 3-0 Baltimore. 1-0 counts. And Joe gets a hold of one into the gap between left and center. Should be extra bases. Should be in second easy and thinking about third here, but he's not the fastest, so he'll hold up at second there. Way to lead off the inning. That brings up Brian Reynolds with a runner on second and no outs. And Means leaves it over the plate. Reynolds goes opposite field. Looks like he will stretch this into a double. An RBI double for Reynolds in the fourth inning. It's time to come back. Reynolds just gets all of it over the plate there. Goes opposite field, which we've been seeing as a trend from him. I love it. That brings up Pagrero. Runner at second. Two outs. Oh, and he looks at that one. That was a decent pitch. 0-1 count. Means is up to 52 pitches already. Delivers a pitch and another one to the left center gap. That'll score Reynolds. Pagrero will get to second easy. Thinks about third. Reverses course. And he's back in safe. Whew. That was dangerous. 3-2 to two Baltimore. But Pittsburgh is fighting back. Another one just left over the plates. Great gapper there. Oliveris, 2-2 two, two counts, bottom of the fourth, runner at second. He almost gives us the lead just early on that swing. Another 2-2 two, two count here. Means to deliver the ball. And he does get all of it. It is four to three, Pittsburgh. Don't count this team out. They like scoring runs. They like hitting the long ball, extra base hits. That one was 425 feet, 110 exit velocity. Oliveris, well done. Just gets a hold of all of it. And he knew it the second he hit it. That's a beauty. That launch angle, perfect, just perfect at bat there. That brings up Nick Gonzalez with a 0-1 count and two outs in the bottom of the fourth. See if we can keep this rally going. And he just, oh, does that? I thought he just went back to back. Thought we went back to back. So close. 0-2 count here and he fouls it off. He's fighting, he's fighting. That's what we like to see. And ball one, one, two count. Jumping ahead here a little bit. The count is now two and two to Gonzalez. And he pops out to the catcher. Well, Pittsburgh took the lead though in the fourth inning. Jumping ahead to the top of the fifth, one out, 2-0 -oh count. And a line drive, Gonzalez can't get it. Oliveris is gonna cut it off here. He turns around and throws it wildly. It is cut off and he throws it to second base and Gonzalez places the tag and it is out. What just happened there? We caught them trying to extend to a double. Not sure about the route to the ball. Bare handing it was a little sketchy. Pagaro deciding to cut it off was great and tosses it to second for the out. That's a rally killer right there. Way to go, defense. But we move in. It's time for Ryan Baraki to come into the game. This will be his fourth outing of the season. Solid pitcher so far. He is our long reliever. Coming in here, I believe it's the sixth inning. Yep, top of the sixth, nobody out. Gonzalez got us five innings. Gonzalez is on the hook for the win as of right now. Let's see if the Pirates can hold on to this one and give him his first win of the year. And that's a base hit up the middle. Oof, rough start. Ground ball, Gonzalez gets it, but he's not able to get Jackson out at first, Jackson Holiday runs it out. Plenty of speed on that guy. I love this kid. Wouldn't mind if he was on the trading block and we're able to trade for him. But that brings up Mullins. And Mullins hits a deep fly ball to center field. Oliveris is going back to the wall. He runs into the wall as he catches it. But they'll definitely get the runner to third on that. Ooh, caught a break there. I thought that was out of here. Ground ball to Telez. He throws it. To second base, back to first. Inning ending double play. 
Well done, Pirates. And in the bottom of the six, McCutcheon is up with a 4-3 lead, two outs, and he swings at that one. He probably shouldn't have done that. 0-1 count to McCutcheon in the bottom of the six here. McCutcheon gets a hold of one. Is that one going to carry for his third of the year? It does. 5-3 Pittsburgh. 372 feet and 99.9 .9 miles per hour exit velocity. Nice swing there by McCutcheon. He's still got it. Excited to have him on the team. Top of the seventh and Jose Hernandez is in the game. Line drive to Gonzalez, one out. Up next is Santander. The line drive, ground ball to Gonzalez. Two outs. Out. Can we make it three for three to Gonzalez? Ground ball to Gonzalez. That retires the side. And then the ups decide the rain's coming down a little too hard, leading in to the top of the eighth inning. So we're gonna go ahead and bring in a fresh arm. It's time to bring up the setup, man. Here comes Heraldus Chapman. Let's see if he can perform a little bit better than last game. First batter, Hayes gets a single up the middle. That's not better. Next batter, Henderson's up to bat. He pops out to Trujillo. Well, that'll be one down. It's kind of what we needed there. Let's see if we can get a ground ball here to end the inning. Nice strike there to Mateo. 0-2 count now, and he throws it outside, but Mateo swigs anyways, two down. Holiday's up to bat here, he dives out of the way, makes it one and two. One, two count here, and ground ball to Pagrero. That will retire the side and send us to the ninth inning. So it's time to bring in the big dog, the closer, Bednar. Time to slam the door in the bottom of the ninth here. At our home opener, can the Pirates hold off the Baltimore Orioles and get their first win at home this season? He's three for three in save opportunities. See if he can make it four for four. Facing the top of the lineup, it's gonna be a tough one. First pitch here to, to Mullins. And it is fouled off, a one count. Coming in here with another fastball, it looks a low location there. 97 miles an hour. Oh, two count to Mullins. And the curveball there it wouldn't have been a slider. Yeah, it was a curveball. One out. Nice ground out to Telez there. That brings up Westberg, who has hit a home run in this game already. And he almost hits another one. Just gets a little bit under it. Reynolds tries to run it down, but it's in the stands. 0-1 count here to Westberg. And a strike on the corner. Nice location of that pitch. And then a line drive to Pagrero. Two down. Pirates are even closer to closing this game out. Rutzman here. Facing Bednar. Strike one. He's locating the fastball really well. You'd expect that from this closer. He's our best overall player. Expecting a good outing here every time he's out on the mound. 0-2. Can you sign my jersey? Look at that. I love it. Little aspects of the game like that are just amazing. The fans are into it on opening day here at home. 0-2 count. And another line drive to Pagrero. That will do it. Pirates win. Continue their winning ways to start the season. Well, the season keeps rolling on, and the success of this team is... Pretty outstanding. We're going to go ahead and sim through a couple games here. Pittsburgh is up 2-1. We're going to go ahead and let this simulate itself. The Pirates have defeated the Orioles 2-1. Oh my goodness, we have started 8-1. and one. And today we have scouting unlocked finally. I'm pretty blown away right now by this team. We have plenty of capacity in our budget right now. We might start thinking about expanding and turning into a contender. I, I, I just don't see us keeping this up. This is a great start. There's no way. But let's go ahead and take a look at our needs. We're going to start this year with pretty much pitching. 
And I think I do want to also focus on first base. It's one of my favorite positions. I played it a ton growing up. So that's what we're going to do there. That will increase the interest for players of those positions. We look at our first scout here. 97% efficiency, 91% discovery. This is a great scout here. Ra Ra Rarick. Herbert Rarick here. Every position he can take care of for us. Then we have William McVeigh. He's uh, pretty good for pitching, not the best. I struggled finding this third really good scout, but our scout here, Rob Norden, efficiency is 90, 91, and then position players are in the 80s, so we won't use him for discovery, but let's start focusing on, let's look at some prospects here. We have the ninth pick, so we're not gonna be in the running for these guys unless they fall down other teams' boards. Looking at a nice shortstop here. Let's get through the tutorial stuff real quick. Look at this contact and power. Wow, I want this guy. We're not going to be able to get him, though. Let's just look at starting pitching real quick. We got Memphis. Got California. North Dakota. Canada. Dominican Republic. New Jersey. Pennsylvania. Canada so scouting an area if we do this would be kind of tough we'd probably want to go east to begin with yeah let's do that we'll get some information on it players in the east number two here he's a little bit better at pitching so we'll go scout position and let's do the same thing let's take a look at our relief pitchers 22 is the highest on the board in California. Then we got East in Pennsylvania. Then another California, Missouri, Rhode Island, New York. I think we want to do East as well here. Just to start off with, we'll go relief pitcher. And then for our third priority, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the first baseman. So our best one. Wow. Wow. 46th overall, not a really good class for a first baseman, but if we look here, this is intriguing. His potential pretty well-rounded in Washington. Okay. So on this, I might just focus on some of these guys. The low overall here scares me. The potential here, this one is the first one that really intrigues me. Let's go ahead and scout Phil Mayo. We'll see how that goes. And we want to keep scouting on auto, switch to manual. We want this manual. Okay, so that's, we got all these set up. I don't know why it said that. Makes me a little, little worried. Finalized plan, there we go. Okay, that's what it was. So back into some simulations here. We are losing five to three. We're gonna go ahead and simulate this one as well. The Orioles defeat the Pirates seven to three. Let's take a look at that box score here. So pitching wise, let's start down here. We had Flatter out there. He is as an ERA of 10, so he's struggling. Not a very good start for him. Trujillo is still struggling to get any hits going. Cruz as well, he's batting 190. The rest of the lineup's doing pretty good. Telez is struggling as well at first base. But all that said, it's an eight and two start after our first three series. Let's take a look at how things are going so far in AAA. Mitch Jeb, batting 382. He's a C potential. Everything's pretty even around the 40s and his ratings, his defense is pretty good. Keep an eye on him for a call up long term. He is 21 years old. That C potential, maybe it's a top C or not. Let's see how that goes. That's a lot of C's in that. Trey Mar Johnson is the one I'm super interested in. We're not far enough in the season to see growth in these players yet. A 222 struggling a little bit from the plate in 36 at bats so far. We want to see that improve. Another one of our B potential players is Chang here. He is a shortstop that can play third base and second base. And so far this year, he's batting 250. Another one to keep an eye on. That's really most of our noteworthy players. Let's go ahead and look at the pitching rotation now for AAA. And so far in what it looks like, let's look at these stats here. Two starts, he's one and one for schemes here. He's given up no home runs, 12 hits, 
where are the strikeouts at? 15 strikeouts. That's what we like to see in 12 innings. This guy, I'm excited about him. 0.5 war, only two starts. If things keep going the way they are going in the big leagues, as we look here, we easily could bring him up and replace Flatter here. Later, Flatter. He's a C potential. He's 26 years old already. Not sure he's going to be in the mix long term. Same with Perez here, though. He's an older He's an older gentleman. We'll see if he can just finish his career or at least this contract. It's a one-year contract. We'll probably be letting him go next year. Gonzalez, who we just saw, we have him under contract for two years. One more after this season. Might be something good there to see him just finish out that contract. And I don't know if he's good enough for a trade piece. The way things were going, my initial plans were to ship out Chapman around time of trade deadline as well as Bednar. Bednar and if things keep progressing the way they're progressing we will not be a seller we will be a buyer trade talks I forget where we can see that if we go into our roster does it show that yes we're in the rebuilding strategy right now if, if we do if we see that change then that might be something we look into as we just kind of look through some teams we got normal normal rebuilding yeah we so we played Washington they're rebuilding the Marlins are normal. And then Baltimore that we played so far. Just kind of get a good vibe of the caliber of these teams. Baltimore's normal as well. They're they're a pretty good team, so I was impressed that we were able to do that against them. And we simulated both games against Detroit, and we went one and one there. And I think let's take a look at we're gonna take a look at triple A. Let's see. We, oh. This will be a perfect game to play. Well, jumping into our first triple A action here. Jeb is leading off the game against St. Louis. First pitch coming in. Ball one. Got a 1-0 count and a ground ball to second base. That'll retire Jeb. Now the guy we're really interested in on the offensive side is here. Johnson. Tamar Johnson. One of our future stars, I'm hoping, at second base. Gonna see him develop throughout the season. I'm really hoping we can call him up in September, see if he's ready for that. If not, we'll have to wait till next season. Well, there's a line drive out to left field. Two down in the top of the first. But the guy we really wanna focus on on this game is Paul Skeens. He's definitely gonna be in the big league sooner than later. Maybe possibly sooner than we thought originally. When first episode, we were talking about bringing him in on September call-ups. But the way the season's going, we might need some pitching to help us stay afloat if we're going to fight for the wild card or even the division. I know it's only like nine games in, and I'm talking big big time here, but you never know. We have a decent offense, so wanted to get a look at Skeens here and see if he's ready. 1-2 count here to Martin. See if he can get his first batter out. Ground ball to Chang. That should do it. One out. We got an 0-2 count here in the second batter he's facing. And a fly ball to Frazier in center field. That'll retire the second batter. 0-2 oh, count here to Man Miranda. And he strikes out Miranda. Good start for Skeens. Now jumping into the bottom of the second. Rodriguez is down 1-2. And he looks at the third strike there. Skeens looking good to start off this game. Facing Lee here, the one out in the second inning. It's a little low, but could have been a strike if the ump would have cooperated. 2-1 count here. Skeens to deliver, hopefully, a put out here. Yes, fly ball to Frazier. So not a ton of strikeouts yet through five batters, but five set down in order. Williams with a 2-0 count and a fly ball to McKean. McKean? McKinney? <laughs> McKinney in right field. End of the second inning. We go to the bottom of the third. And now it is seven up, seven down for Skeens. Quite a start. 0-2 count here on Gary in the third inning. And we'll make that eight out of eight. Skeens is rolling. Full count here. And a foul ball. We'll do it again. 3-2 count. Trying to go nine for nine facing St. Louis here. He struck him out. Not bad. One hit for the Indians, zero for the Saints so far through three. 
Jump back into Tamar Johnson's second at bat here in the top of the fourth. He's 0 for 1. See if he can get something going. Looks at a good first pitch there. Just getting a feel for this pitcher still. The count is now 1 and 2. And a nice, oh, good foul ball there. 1 and 2 still. Thought he was going to get a hit there. Just a little early. Another one a little early. 92 mile an hour fastball. We're just not, you know, we're not adjusting to the slowness of that compared to some of these other pitchers we faced. And he strikes out. Got him on the changeup. He was already ahead on the fastballs, but the changeup struck him out. Back to Skeens here in the fourth inning. Try to go 10 for 10 here and keep the no hitter alive. 0-1 count. And it's a little low. The changeup. So his control is a little iffy so far. Seems to be pretty good, but that's not good. That's a way to break up the no hitter. One nothing Saints. Skeens leaves one over the plate there. Just a mistake. I didn't even want to see the replay. Jump ahead to the top of the seventh. It's now 5-1 Indians here, and Johnson's up again. He's one for three for the game. And first pitch right up the middle for a base hit. I like batting with him. I think he's definitely going to be a good addition to the team. It's just a matter of time before he's a contributor at the big leagues. So we're at the bottom of the ninth here. As Skeens tries to close out this game, it's 10 to 1. See if he can get a complete game. He's got two hits given up at this point. And there's out number 25 for the game. Let's see if he can get to 27. Now facing Martin. 2-2 two -two count here. He's 1 for 3 for the game. And a line drive to Johnson. We get to see a lot of Johnson there. All right. Now 3-2. One strike to go for the complete game. Two hitter, one run given up, and a base hit up the middle. Yeah, should we pull him now? I don't know. I don't know. His pitch count's not super high, but the, the longer he's gone in this game, the controls started to become somewhat of a question. I mean, that's the third hit he's given up, so he's doing great, but the control definitely started to go away, and you can see here with this deep shot to left field, might score a run here. Try to get it in the time. It will not. Jeb tries anyways. It's 10-2, to 2, and I think it's time to go to the bullpen here. So we have Fleming come in to close off the game. 0-1 count now. Jump ahead to a 2-2 count and a ground ball to Johnson. Very fitting that it went to him to end the game. A nice win for the AAA squad. It was fun playing with the AAA team. You can see the box score here for people that are interested got through eight and two thirds with Skeens gave up four hits two earned runs one home run six strikeouts pretty good outing for him was hoping to get through the entire game but we had to pull him there at the in the bottom of the ninth so now switching back to the big league club here we're gonna go ahead and start our simulation process here we will go ahead and do that the Phillies beat us four to three second game of the series we don't score a run Third game of the series, we are up three to two and end up holding on to that one. And back to scouting. So I wanted to get to this day before ending the episode because we wanted to take a look at what we had here. And our first one, let's take a look. 77% scouted, 51% interest. Some of his stats look pretty good. Fielding is a little, little lower than what we would want. His overall coming in isn't bad. So this is somebody, he's a one-year junior college player. He's 19 years old already. He can play left field as well as first base. Probably someone we would look at as a DH potentially. Numbers might not be super high. It looks like against the left-handers, he has better contact, better power. Real similar to some of those other players that we have on the team that aren't necessarily superstars on both sides of the plate. So recently scouted, we'll take a look at our starting pitchers here. Number 16 overall on the MLB board. He moved up to 14 on ours. Let's see what we got here. Potentially good stamina. Strikeouts aren't as high as I would like to see them, but walks are pretty well, pretty high there. That's something that we're looking at. I'm, I'm kind of digging Teddy here. Let's see what he's throwing. He's throwing a running fastball that can get up to about 97 miles an hour. A slider and a changeup. Not a bad combo there. He's somebody we might keep an eye on 
Let's keep moving through these though. Potential 79 through 95. We might do another week of this just to get more of these guys scouted here. Omar P Prado, he jumped up a couple spots on our board as well. Stats don't look too bad. Pitches, he's got five pitches, a fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and a running fastball as well. I'm hoping to spend a lot of time on scouting off camera and really dig into some of these players. So we're getting a lot of information about players that we'll be able to take late in the draft. None of these guys really popped up onto our top 100 board, but that's not bad. That's not bad. Now let's switch over to relief pitchers, pitchers here. See one here, maybe a second round option. I don't like his overall. He's straight out of high school. It's going to be a longer development project. Not too bad there. We'll keep going, getting these scouted a little bit more as well. Uh, no interest on any of them except for this one. Interesting. Maybe we didn't get far enough in the scouting process to build that interest, but this one's, I don't dislike what I'm seeing so far here. Not sure he's going to get up to that 98 potential, but we'll keep going with that. And yeah, we'll mix this up. Do we get a full scouting on Phil Mayo? I think we do. Let's go ahead and let that finish. And I think I want to just change this assignment. We'll go central this time. It's a little bit more there. I think I do want more information out of the starters in the West or the East. Let's look at these again. Recommended draft prospects. As we look at number nine on our board, he's number five on the MLB board. So it'd kind of be a stretch to get him later on in the process. We'll probably scout Oswald Ramirez a little bit to get some more information on him. But the first one that really pops in is from Canada. And then where is Ramirez? He's North Dakota. Dominican, got Jersey, so we're getting those ones. I think we're gonna switch this up. I do think we are gonna edit this one to international. Get some information on them, and that'll be real nice there. We'll finalize the plan, and I think that'll sum up this episode. We have dropped to a tie with the Reds for first place at 10 and five, good start to the season. As far as the wild card's concerned, that's gonna be a good spot there, but it is way too early to even be talking about those things. Next episode, we will get through the month of April, do a lot more scouting, and really have a good idea where this team is. And at that point, we'll potentially talk about making a move of bringing Skeens up to the big leagues if he keeps performing the way he is right now. I'm Soxway Up, thanks for hanging out. I will catch you on the next episode.